Oh, well, I was only six when I was thrown on stage by my godfather who owned a theatre called the Harrow Coliseum. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, he decided I was going on stage that night with the Carl Roser Opera Company and Madame Butterfly. So I was six. And then when I was 12, I suppose everybody realized I wasn't going to do much at school. I did all, all, the, all the ballet exams and things, did pantomime, bits and pieces like that. Mm -hmm. It was hard graft, and mm -hmm. there, were, there were a lot of times out of work. And you make that transition from child to soubrette, as we were known as. I was lucky in a way because I got introduced very early on to something called Intimate Review. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was very good, uh, sort of like a school almost. You had 17 quick changes in the evening, and if you looked at the wrong pair of gloves, you were off. And you did lots of different voices, lots of different accents, lots of different characters mm -hmm. from children to old ladies. And so it, it was hard graft. And then the other uh, marvellous thing <clears throat> excuse me, that happened for me, well, amongst others, uh, was because I started in musicals anyway, mm. but uh, I, be I I did a musical for Joan Littlewood, mm -hmm. who was who was very famous at the time, and uh, I went into the West End with a show with her. I was with Joan for for nearly a year, and well, the thing about Joan is that once you leave her, if you've got in any inhibitions, you forget the business because she was a great one for making you do things, mm. uh, so that you. Don't feel a fool. Revolutionary uh, director in a way, wasn't she? She was, yeah. absolutely. And at the time, I went into town with, with the late and great Daniel Massey with something um, which Wolf Mankiewicz wrote called, oh, God, and I can't remember what it was called. No. But we got, to, I was thinking of Bar Windsor, you see, because there was Sparrows Can't Sing, there was mm -hmm. The Hostage. Mm -hmm. There were about five or six shows in London. Make Me an Offer was the one yeah. I did. Thank mm -hmm. you. It came to be. Um, and so there were about six or seven of us. But it was there was one Murphy, Murphy, Youth of Joyce, all us lot. We're all together. Leela Hancock, uh, Victor Spinetti. We all got to know each other, picked over the traces. And uh, so I've had uh, it was sort of quite a, quite a rough time, quite a hard time. Um, when, when would you say the first break into movies came for you? I sort of went through a period, being very tiny, if they wanted a, a small comedienne, because I was small and cute, not tall and exotic, and if they wanted a small comedienne opposite a comedian, I tended to get the job. Mm. So one worked with Norman Wisdom, doing little cameo roles, mm -hmm. and Doctor at Large, yes, I was doing musicals then, and, and I did Doctor at Large with, with Dirk Bogard, who was, who was a dear. But I was only in my very early twenties and uh, thought I was pretty sensational. And in fact, it was it was it was Ralph Thomas who who did the Doctor films who said to me, "Dillis, you you've got to go straight. You've got to get some straight experience. You've got to stop musicals, otherwise you, you ain't gonna last, baby." Mm. And uh, so that was it. I put myself out of work for a while. And of course, the Carry On films, uh, oh, legendary yes. now, yes, and yes. Uh, and and the team that um, everybody recognises and and. In a way, you, you've worked with just about everybody in the who's who of British theatre and television. But but in in movies, you you mentioned Dirk Bogard and yeah. you know the various people. But in the Carry On films, of course, everybody worked so well together. Yes, we did, and not only that, because we all worked so well together. When it was when we come lunchtime, we had with the Carry On table in the restaurant, and we all sat round this enormous table and it mm -hmm. laughed together. And as I've always said, Joan Sims and I had a special makeup call afterwards because the makeup had just Run out of place. We laughed so much. Well, Kenneth Williams' stories were legendary, weren't they? Yes, they, they were. Used to sit around and yes. hold court. That's right. Mm. At lunch as well. Yes, I liked Kenny very much. He was a strange chap, as we all know. I'm not speaking out of turn, but I actually got on with him. And I understand, though I haven't read all his diaries, he speaks quite kindly of right. in his diaries. And I think he can be quite vitriolic. Joan Sims and I are still friends, but we, we in fact, were in review together many years ago when we were kids. They're sort of films that you can watch over and over again, yes, though, aren't they? I get letters from all over the world, mm -hmm. really. Oh, yes. Yes, because I was talking to somebody about them last night, because although they're slightly risky, you know that nothing really untoward is no. going to happen. Barbara Windsor, funnily, we mentioned her mm. there, but you, you followed her into EastEnders. In fact, you were in EastEnders before she I, was, I, I think, went in you? for Yes, I went in for a couple of episodes as, as Debbie's mother, mm. for the um, mother of the bride, and then went back the following year to help fight for the child when she left or mm. she was killed. What's your first love, though? Because obviously... Theatre, uh, theatre, theatre, without I was going to say theatre, but musical yes. theatre, would that still be well, top of the tree for you? I've done some 
rather nice theatre, yes, 42nd Street and things like, mm. like that, Pirates of Penzance. There is nothing like hearing an overture. Thanks so much for listening to this video. If you enjoyed it, please click on the like button. Make sure you ring that notification bell to be informed of any future videos. And above all, if you possibly can, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.